What is going on, everyone? Tim from Tier Phone Orbital. So today I would like to talk a little bit about a very interesting looking hilt with a very interesting looking install. Okay, so this is a, I don't know what this is. Honestly, I don't know what this is called. I think this is a Saber Forge, an older Saber Forge build. Uh, so it, it is a curved hilt. So it has a curved chassis in it and curved chassis are very, very difficult. Well, not, they're not super difficult, but they're very interesting to design chassis for. So cur curved hilts are interesting to design chassis for, right? So I do wanna come into Fusion and talk a little bit about the chassis first, and then we will come up top and talk about how to use the hilt because this does not have a threadable grip on it. It, ha it has a set screw grip. So there are some intricacies about how to take the grip off and put the grip on. And I want to go over all of that, right? So with all that out of the way, let's jump into Fusion. All right. So here it is, right? <laughs> right, right off the bat. Very interesting looking chassis, right? Uh, you know, it starts off normal and then it like kind of kicks off to an angle, right? So um, I don't typically do cha curved chassis. Um, they're they're not easy to do, right? You've got to figure out your your angle of attack and all that stuff. So uh, I took a couple of test prints before I got the angle right for this one. I did have to make a compromise for this chassis, and that is a fourteen five hundred battery, right? Fourteen five hundred. 18500 rather sorry 18500 battery so it is a shorter battery so i could navigate the kink in this hilt right so battery tray is here obviously uh, we could fit in a 28 millimeter speaker in this however so there is a 28 millimeter speaker down here here is our battery tray we do have a kill switch here around back is our profi tray this is a profi v3 build Pretty simple build actually. And we do have two rectangular LEDs here. This is for some, just a little bit of extra accent, right? But other than that, just Greeblies on each side. I did utilize this tube here for my like external wire management, right? So I bring my wire, my uh, negative battery lead as well as my speaker leads up through this tube all of the way up into this cavity where the profi board is. And that's where I use my, like make my splices and all of that. Jeez, man, I'm I'm terrible at navigating in Fusion. This large window here is for the. Um, they're not really AV switches. They're just large, tw large, twelve millimeter tactile momentary switches. They're not. Yeah, they're just large, twelve millimeter switches on this one, rather, right? Um, and that's what that large window is um, taking account for, right? So yeah, just an interesting shaped chassis. Uh, again, I did have to make a couple of test prints for this one uh, just to make sure all of my tolerances were correct. Uh, but other than that, just, you know, usual install. Up top is a, a lit PCB emitter from CC Sabers. And that is it, right? Let's come up top and talk about how to use this guy. Okay. All right. So here it is, right? Um, I, again, I don't know what this is called. I, I, when I was working on this with a customer, I called it the Bane. I'm pretty sure it's not a Bane. Um, so yeah, I think this was purchased secondhand by the customer. It could have been a custom build uh, by somebody. Uh, when I received this, it looked as though it was hand painted or painted um, by someone else. Uh, when you paint over chrome, um, it does flake very easily. So this grip was already painted and it was coming off. Like it came off on my hands as I started working on it. So I, I repainted the grip. Uh, and that is why you can tell that the grip is a little bit more of a matte color. Uh, these uh, kidney shaped windows here, that is the original paint and you can kind of tell that it's flaking off a little bit already. It is still painted with the original paint in this uh, trench in here as well. Uh, but I just repainted the grip. I repainted this with a black Tamiya spray. Like I masked everything off, repainted it, and then I put a couple applications of uh, matte clear just to help seal it a little bit. But yeah, the, the paint in this section was pretty, pretty far gone, right? Uh, interesting grip, right? Uh, this whole grip is it, it, like clamshells. 
Um, so just keep that in mind to you, the customer. Um, I feel like this is a very old lightsaber model. Um, it's just like, so this whole thing, it's not one one piece. They kind of, the two parts kind of clamshell together. Um, so just keep that in mind, right? Here is the chassis, okay? I did a pass of pewter rub and buff on this guy and then uh, sealed it. Uh, and that's pretty much it, right? Different size battery for this one. Uh, I have, this is my first time using one of these actually, 18500 battery. Um, just a little bit of a shorter battery, okay? So we could we could uh, use, a, use a smaller battery to navigate that uh, angled chassis, okay? Spring side is your negative. So take the flat part of your battery. I'm going to include this battery uh, with the install, by the way, to the customer. I'm not sure if we discussed that or not, but I will be including this with the install. Spring side is your negative. So take the flat part of your battery, put it in that battery tray, okay? Hit your kill switch. So there are those two lit rectangular LEDs. Oops. There we go. Okay. So once you get your battery in, so this is the tricky part, right? Um, where, so I mentioned that this is clamshell together, okay? Um, you have to make sure that both pieces are fully engaged. Otherwise, it's not going to fit inside of this upper emitter section, right? So it is, you kind of have to force it in here, okay? So what I do is I just kind of line the holes up and I push it together like that, and then it'll fit together, okay? You're, there are two... Uh, screws that secure both parts together, both parts of the hilt. So yeah, you want to make <laughs> you want to make sure both of those holes are lined up just so. So when you put your screw in, everything lines up and screws in correctly. There we go. Okay. Really interesting feeling hilt with the curve like that. All right. So let's come down to the bottom. Interesting shape. Interesting curve to that. Let's see what else we put on here. The NASA team is ready for launch. Ascension. Okay. Let's put a blade in it. Okay, so one inch blade, blade holder in this guy, nice deep blade socket. So you wanna uh, insert your blade so it's resting on those PCB pins. And then you can tighten, there's a set screw around front here. Just tighten that so it is hugging your blade. And then you are good to go. It's very interesting feeling hilt with that grip like that. There's like a trigger almost here. See what else we put on here. Okay. One more. The NASA team is ready for launch.
And that is it. That is the custom unknown from Saber Forge. I think it's from Saber. Whoops. I think it's from Saber Forge. I've never, some of these parts look familiar to me, but yeah, I, I don't know. So uh, yeah, doing the chassis for this was a little bit of a challenge. I don't often design curved chassis for obvious reasons, right? Like, so like navigating a curve and f figuring out all of your angles. And like, I had to break out a protractor to do this one. That was a lie. I didn't, I didn't do that. I just had to do a bunch of, <laughs> of test prints for this one. So anyhow, uh, to the customer, thank you very much for your patience. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this one out this week. Tomorrow is Saturday, so I will be getting this one out tomorrow uh, to you. So thank you very much for your patience. Uh, to anyone else, if you have any questions about this particular install or anything really, please do not be a stranger. And with that being said, Thank you for watching, everyone. May the force be with you. Always have a good one.